have to move the lamp if I need to. That's okay. cute. Soup's cute, super cute. <laughs> Okay, hey everybody. If you saw my Instagram last week, I told you guys my birthday's coming up. I'm turning 23 on May 14th. And so I wanted to do a little birthday series for the month of May. So every week I'm gonna release a video that has to do with the number 23. It's my Jordan year, holla. Today is 23 questions. I had you guys comment on my Instagram post that I put up last week. I wrote down kind of the 23 best ones that I found. All right, well, let's dive in. 23 questions. Number one, Taylor Smith 23 said, what are your tattoos and what's the meaning of them? So I have one, two, three, four tattoos. The first one I got is on my rib cage. Me and all my sisters have that and we got it for my mother. I have one on my ankle. There's an olive branch, a wildflower, and a marigold. Um, I stood up on the Mount of Olives in Israel in 2016 and I go back to Israel um, at the end of this month, actually. It also has to do with the verse in Matthew. In Matthew 6, consider the wildflowers in the field. So it's about just not worrying. This one I got in Spain slash uh, Italy at the beginning of this year. This one is a symbol of moving forward. And I'm about to get like a couple more. Um, I don't know if I'll stop. So those are my tattoos and those are the meanings of them. Number two, Hannah Stasiak said, did you go to college? What's your job? I did not go to college. I was actually studying for nursing. I know in Preacher's Daughters, you guys saw me try to figure out, should I do ministry? Should I go to fashion school? I didn't do either of those things, but I actually signed a publishing deal for songwriting. And then a year after that, I signed a record deal. Just jumped right into music. I had no plan of doing that. God just had a different way, I guess. My job, I do a lot of songwriting. I do a lot of this. Um, I'm lucky enough that this has kind of become part of my job, being able to create content for you guys. I do a lot of social media marketing for other people. I buy old furniture and I flip it. I do anything to make money, except sell myself. Nice. <laughs> Marie Katie 13 said, what's a blueprint of your life look like? I don't know how you meant that Marie, but I'm just gonna answer it how I think. Honestly, every day looks very different for me. Um, because I do so many different things and I have so many different passions, I try to give myself the freedom to do all of those things. I'm trying to get better about structuring things because it's healthy for someone like me who just goes like this all the time. No one day really looks the same, to be honest. Blueprint of just my life in general as a whole. I just try to love people and I don't really care what I do as a career. If God told me to be a janitor tomorrow, I would be as long as that's like the best way I can love people. Number four, Rachel19 said, at what age did you learn the most about yourself and God? I feel like every year that I'm older, I think that that last year was when I learned the most about myself and about God. The moment you think you've learned all about yourself, the moment you think you've learned everything there is to know about God, you need to take a second look. I think a big turning year for me was when I was 17 because I went to this women's retreat and kind of rededicated my life um, to the Lord. I learned so much good and bad about myself and so much about God every year. Ava Taylor said, which song of yours is your favorite and why? My favorite song I've ever written and released is Save Yourself. I wrote that um, right after I had learned and discovered some traumatic things about my childhood. Save Yourself describes where I was at in that time of my life. I felt like I was drowning. Uh, I felt like there was just no way out. When a lifeguard is in training, they're actually told if they see someone drowning, wait until you see that person completely like stop frailing around because if you go too soon, then they will actually drag you under and both of you could die. That's how I think God sees us sometimes as we're frailing and we're like, help us, help us, help us. And he tries to rescue us, but we just drag him down rather than let him drag us out. And sometimes he's just sitting there and he's like, hey, I need you to surrender. I need you to give up all control. Stop fighting this. Stop trying to do it on your own and let me save you. So that's my favorite song of mine. Abigail Petones, number six, said, how are you so confident? Girl, um, I ain't. I've learned to just embrace myself where I'm at, good or bad, and just acknowledge and be like, you know what, this is where I am. And you don't have to try to be something you're not. And so that's helped me walk more in confidence. I have many days where I sit and cry in front of my friends or my boyfriend and I'm like, I don't feel pretty today. I don't feel seen. I don't feel loved. I 
don't feel wanted. You have to let confidence be a fact, not just a feeling. And so I walk in the fact that, you know what, I have confidence given to me by God, even if I don't feel that today. Number seven, Sammy Coaster. How would you describe your style? I-D-G-A-F. That would be my style. I can literally look like a tomboy. I can look like a sorority girl. I literally just wear whatever I feel that day. I do not have a specific style. I just wear whatever I want. I-D-G-A-F. Rebecca Sarah 4311 said, what's the hardest part about being in the public eye? I don't think I'm in the public eye nearly as much as other people, obviously. The hardest part has been people assuming things about you that they don't actually know. My following and fans, it feels weird saying that, all of you guys are actually really great about giving me the freedom to speak uh, about my life and not assuming a lot about me. But I think that can be the hardest part is people assuming things about your life that they actually don't have knowledge of. Number nine, Jazz0713 said, I've seen that your grandma is from Panama. Do any of you speak or understand Spanish? Si, sí. yo hablo un poquito español, pero necesito practicar. Mi hermana si mi mamá no habla español. So you don't know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I understand it better than I can speak it. I feel like I just sound like I speak it well only because I've been around my grandmother. Number 10, Ice Music 707 said, what's your favorite scripture? Exodus 1414 14 is my favorite, which is the Lord himself will fight for you. You need only to be still. Number 11, meet the Masons said, favorite book to study in the Bible, which book to read when you feel lost? My favorite book to study, I really love Hebrews. I could sit and read that every day um, for a year and I don't think I would get bored of it. And then which book to read when you feel lost? I listen to worship music when I feel lost and then I just kind of sit and I allow um, the Holy Spirit to just coat me. I don't think there's anything in the Bible you could read that wouldn't help saturate your soul. Anna Cora said, dating advice as a Christian, what to look for and what not to look for. I heard a great sermon once, which was focus on becoming somebody versus finding somebody. When you're, you know, ready to date, I think first and foremost, we need to be in the right place. Our hearts should be whole because two broken people don't come together and just make a whole piece. It's two whole people come together and make a complete version of what God created and intended for relationship and marriage. My advice would be don't chase after somebody who has a tattoo of a cross, but like doesn't actually bow down and surrender to the cross. There's evidence in someone's everyday walk that shows you if they are genuine and truly after the heart of Christ. Don't go for the douchebags. Simple enough. <laughs> Simply put, don't go, don't go for the douchebags. Darth Gabby 714 said, do you think you are strong in your faith because you were raised in a faith-based home or is it because you decided you wanted it? I think growing up in a faith-based home set a really great foundation for me. I made the decision on my own through trials and through questions and um, through really seeking after answers. There's a saying that's like, God doesn't have any grandchildren. So it's like, you're not a Christian just because your parents are. But I don't think that's just like, yeah, whatever my parents, you know, I grew up in that. So now I'm a Christian. It's like, no, he wants you to seek after him. I think it gave me a foundation, but I've sought after it on my own. Number 14, Maya Elaine said, did you ever feel disconnected to Tawny and Taryn because you and Kendra grew up different from them? You guys grew up around your parents being divorced and they got to fully experience them being together for more, most of their growth. I never felt disconnected from Tawny and Taryn. They actually have a different dad and their dad left when they were really young. My dad adopted them and raised them as his own. We have not ever felt disconnected. We are all one family and have been there for one another through all of it. 15, Leah Boo XO. What's something you wish Christians would think or do? I don't think there's a there's enough honesty and vulnerability in Christianity. I think that we kind of get this lie put into our head that we can't show the full, like the rawness of where we're at. Like we're not fully surrendered to God or, or um, we're not good enough Christians or we're not, we don't have enough faith. I hope and wish that there was more of that being wiped out. That like actually being vulnerable and showing up and being real and honest, even when it's not pretty, is what God wants more than having these little robots who are like, everything is perfect. Sharni McIntosh said, what held you closer to God during the darker times? Scripture, prayer, talking to people about the dark times I was going through, therapy. There were times I was hanging by a thread. He's just a 
good God who doesn't let go of us even when we try to let go of him. Alexis Bond, zero, zero. How do you move on from heartbreak and find yourself again? What was your hardest situation? I think the best heartbreak advice I can give, I get asked this question a lot, is time. We want to find the next person. We wanna, we don't give our hearts enough time to heal. If you love someone and it doesn't work, like you have to allow your heart time to heal from that because you gave a part of your heart to that person. A sprained wrist or a sprained ankle takes longer to heal than a break. Sometimes we treat our heart breaks as like heart sprains. That actually takes longer to heal than if you treat it as a break and you cast it up, you don't let anything into it, and that's what we need to do. Like, don't don't jump to another relationship. Don't go look for affirmation from a, you know, a one night thing that will push you even further away from the love that you're desiring. What was my hardest situation? Y'all had a lot of heartbreaks, all right? I ain't going through all that. Danielle Miles Abernathy, can you elaborate on your journey with purity? I waited till marriage for sex, but had purity struggles along the way. I've talked about this really openly. I am waiting till marriage for sex. I could do an entire video on why you should wait for marriage to have sex, like, and it has nothing to do with faith, even. I started meeting people who made it a normal thing. There wasn't a lot of boundaries being put on and, and I reflected a lot and I was like, okay, wait, why am I doing this? It's been a journey for me to um, to decide that and I don't know how much you want me to elaborate on it, but that's been my decision-making process. It just protects your heart and it protects the heart of your future spouse. M. Lowen, best year of your life and why? Hmm, nine years old because I ate so many gushers and never got a tummy ache. Actually, real talk, best year of my life was probably 16 because I literally ate Sonic mozzarella sticks at least four times a week and y'all, you never saw it on the bot. I feel like every year is just a great year and I try to embrace it. Kaya and G22, what's your biggest regret? Answering this question, just kidding. <laughs> my biggest regret, golly, that's heavy. I think one of my biggest regrets is how little I loved myself. Um, from like 13 to 18. I was so critical of myself all the time. I remember thinking like, gosh, I'm so ugly, I'm so fat, I'm so all of these things. And I like wanna hug that version of me and be like, you are looking in the wrong mirror. So that's a big regret of mine. Haley R is cool. What is your dream job, dream place to live? Dream job is probably this. I wanna be able to be me. I don't want anyone telling me what I have, what I can say, what I can't say. I got a lot to say. I got a lot of things that probably piss people off, but I got a lot of things that people will like. I'm kind of living my dream right now, which is bizarre and a huge blessing. And then dream place to live. Honestly, I'll live anywhere. I don't really care. I just, my dream is more that I can always have the freedom to travel. I would love to stay in Nashville, but if I could travel like once a month or do like a big trip every like two months, I, that's my dream. 22, Shrey. Akaram said, when will you get married? Your guess is as good as mine. And I can then show the put a ring on it. At my boyfriend below. Oh, um, just no, kidding. <laughs> okay, number 23, the final question. 13 Get Man said, where do you see yourself in five years? I have no idea. If you would ask me five years ago where I saw myself in five years, I would have told you I was gonna be like a nurse married with two kids. I hope that in five years, I'm doing what I love, um, that I'm loving people well, that I'm able to reach people and speak into people's lives and give them advice and um, help them through whatever they're going through and I can share my experiences and my story. I'd love to be married, but I don't know. My boyfriend's sitting right here. He was praying, so. Yeah. <laughs> I have learned to loosen the grip on trying to plan out my whole life. If I would have planned out my life five years ago, I don't think I would be as happy as I am today. What I would love is that, to just be thriving and doing what my heart desires um, with the people who my heart desires. Thank you for watching this video. Next week, I'm gonna do 23 of my favorite things. Like I said, my birthday is this month, um, so everything's gonna be 23 related. Subscribe, blah, 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 what all those YouTube people say. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys later.